Windows. I'm going to talk about Windows. But first of all, I'd just like to um, think about some claims that we may hear about building materials. Um, and I'd like you to look at these and think, are they true? Do you believe them? And why or why not? So first of all, here's, um, here's someone saying we used special insulating paint on our house. Do you believe this? What do you think? Uh, next one. Um, this wall insulation will reduce your heating bills by 90%. Um, that sounds wonderful. Do you believe it? Uh, why? Why not? Next one. Uh, check out these bricks. These concrete bricks have polystyrene foam in the middle to make them insulate better. That sounds great too, but do you believe them? Um, why? Why not? Now, we're going to talk about windows, but first of all, can you think about this? Um, here's a paper wall. Um, how would you, what do you think the U value, what's the insulation performance of this wall? Um, what do you think? Have a think about that. Um, and let's, now we can talk about windows. Let's look at these windows. Here are some, um, they look nice and shiny and clean. Um, but how good do you think these windows are? How would you, if you were to give them a score from one is terrible, 10 is excellent, uh, what score would you give, um, what score would you give these windows? And um, if you wanted to make them better, maybe they don't get a 10, um, how can we get them, how can we make them better? How can we make these windows better? Um, and how would you, if you wanted to calculate the how good they are at insulating, uh, we want to use the U value to work out how good they are at insulating. Um, how would you do that? How would you estimate their um, performance? So please uh, have a think. Um, think about these things. So um, we used special insulating paint on our house. Um, I don't really believe this, and the reason I don't believe this is because paint is really thin, um, and insulation depends on thickness. So if you put paint on the house, it's not going to make a big difference to the insulation, um, because it's very thin. So I would be a bit suspicious of um, special insulating paint. Um, it may make a difference to the heat loss of the house, but I don't think it's insulation. Um, anyway, how about these concrete bricks? These concrete bricks sound wonderful. Um, they've got polystyrene foam in the middle. Polystyrene is a very good insulator. Concrete is not a good insulator. Um, the problem is um, that the heat will probably go through the concrete. So the there's air gaps in the concrete bricks already. Because they're air gaps, not much heat is going through the air gaps. So the polystyrene won't make a big difference. And also there are air gaps, the polystyrene doesn't seem to fit. Um, it, there still seem to be air gaps between the polystyrene and the concrete, even after these polystyrene bricks, these polystyrene foam has been put in. So I don't think this will work very well. Um, the heat's going through the concrete anyway, and there are still air gaps around the polystyrene, so you're still going to get air leaking through and bringing heat through. So um, it's a good. Someone is trying, but I don't. I don't think that's going to work very well. Um, next one, then. This wall insulation will reduce your heating bills by ninety percent. This sounds great. Um, however. Um, Walls do not lose 90% of the heat of your house. Um, so they cannot reduce your heating bills by 90%. Um, heat is also being lost through your roof, through your floor, through your ventilation, through your doors and through your windows. So you can't save that much heat from insulating the walls. You can save something. Insulating walls is a good idea. Um, but it's not going to reduce your heating bills by 90%. You need to look at the roof and the floor 
on the ventilation and the windows and the doors as well. And you can maybe get 90% reduction in heating, but you need to look at everything, not just the walls. Um, so that's the that's the problem there with your um, wall insulation. Uh, so onto windows then. Now windows lose about 30 to 50% of a building's heat. Um, so unless you do something about the windows, uh, you're not going to get 90% heat loss reduction. Um, also in the summer, we gain a lot of heat through the windows and that can be up to 50 to 70% of the extra heat that we gain in the summer when we don't want it. Um, so windows in terms of the heat performance of the house, windows are very, very important. Um, we lose lots of heat in the winter when we want the house to stay warm and we gain lots of heat in the summer when we want the house to stay cool. So we need to think very carefully about our windows. Um, they're probably the most common source of regret for builders and homeowners. When um, people are thinking about their house, what they did wrong, often the windows are there in the list. Um, so um, here's a um, here's a, a high performance window. Um, I think this has many things that um, we want in a window. Um, and insulation. We want an insulated window. We want the window to stop heat loss. So have a look at this picture. Um, what do you think is the best insulator in this picture? Um, let's look at some thermal conductivities then. Uh, these are thermal conduct. These are all things that appear in windows, and um, the best insulators are all gases. So I'm sorry, that's a trick question. You can't see the best insulator because it will be um, krypton or argon or possibly air. Um, those would, would be the best insulators. Um, they may have some kind of rigid insulation, like expanded um, polystyrene or extruded polystyrene, I should say. Um, they probably have wood in or PVC. Windows usually have glass in. Glass is not a good insulator. Um, some windows have aluminium in them. Um, aluminium is a terrible insulator. So um, just to put this into kind of context, if we take, if we look at the performance we need for a given level of insulation, um, if we start with one centimeter of XPS, um, that's equivalent to just three millimeters of krypton. Um, it's also equivalent to 70 meters of aluminium. So if we want to make our house warm using aluminium, it's it's not going to work because the house will be so big um, that it's going to lose more heat from being bigger anyway. Um, so that that gives you an idea of what we um, we want. Um, the more of the the top half of this we have in our windows, the better insulation it will be. And when we start using um, glass or aluminium, the insulation is not going to be good. Um, so. I need to talk about double glazing and um, double glazing was um, invented in Scotland um, probably uh, in Victorian times around 150 years ago as a um, as a system. Um, Thermopane in the US in the 1930s they started to sell um, units, window units that had two layers of glass and um, they were a luck. They were expensive, so they were a luxury item in the U.S. in the 1950s. Um, the 1950s in the U.S. Uh, was, I think, quite a rich, prosperous time. Um, in the U.K., the 1950s were not so prosperous. There wasn't so much money. Um, double pane windows were too expensive, and also coal was quite cheap, so people could keep their their houses warm quite cheaply. So they didn't need to spend so much money on getting good windows until 
the 1970s. And in the 1970s, we had the oil shock. Uh, there were some problems in the Middle East and the price of oil went up a couple of times very suddenly and very drastically. And people um, became concerned about how to stay warm. And what this resulted in Europe, um, also in Canada, was um, the idea of building houses to use less energy. So low energy housing, and more insulation. And suddenly double glazing became a very good idea and didn't seem so expensive now that heating had become much more expensive. Um, interestingly, this a different thing happened in Japan. Um, the oil shock affected Japan as well. But the effect in Japan was to focus on energy efficient products. Uh, so to start making cars and making machines and electronic goods that use less energy. Um, and also, I guess the idea of gaman um, was maybe strengthened in Japan in the 1970s uh, during the oil shock. Um, now, I can just about remember the 1970s and I remember um, the push for double glazing. Uh, and here's a um, let me just show you this TV advertisement for double glazing that I remember from being a kid. up in the Pennines. It's freezing and blowing a gale. What a challenge for double glazing. And this is the Tan Hill Inn, the highest pub in England. Guess which double glazing they've got. Wouldn't think you're in the same place, would you? And here's why. Everest replacement windows. These new frames are made from tough UPVC. And they've got the famous Everest draft proofing. In fact, nowadays, this is the only draft you find up here. You only fit double glazing once, so fit the best, Everest. So why does double glazing work? Um, the reason why double glazing works is not because of the glass, but because of the air. Um, there's a layer of air in the middle. That's what makes double glazing better. That's what makes it lose less heat. Um, and how do you make double glazing work better? Well, thicker layer of air will make it better. And what I think happened then back in the 1970s when people started to sell double glazing was um, they started off with um, six millimetres of air uh, between two panes of glass. So if you have two panes of glass, put some air in the middle. There's a very big improvement in the performance. They're much, much better than just a single layer of glass. Um, so this is great. Um, what they started to do next, there were different companies trying to sell their double glazing and they wanted to sell better double glazing than their competitors. So someone decided, well, let's use eight millimeters, eight millimeters. Then we can say our glass is eight millimeters thick. That's better. And it is better. It's about 30 percent better than six millimeters. So someone else came back and said, well, we can do better than eight millimeters. We could do 12 millimetres of air. And 12 millimetres is a little bit better than 8 millimetres, but not much better. Um, and then someone came out with 16 millimetres, and this isn't any better at all. And in fact, as the air gets thicker, as the, as the panes of glass get further apart, it starts to get worse. The performance, the insulation starts to get worse. Um, why, <laughs> here's my question for you, why does, um, why does thicker stop being better when you're looking at glass? There's more air. Uh, we remember from insulation that a thick layer of insulation is better than a thin layer. Um, but it stops being, stops being better. Why does it stop being better? Well, um, convection is the reason. And what happens, we get a situation something like this. This is just a, a measure of the temperature and air movement between um, a hot wall and a cold wall. And what's happening um, at the hot wall, uh, the air inside is heating up, going to the top. Uh, when it hits the top, it goes across to the cold side, 
when it hits the cold side, the air cools down and starts sinking and goes down to the bottom. So you start to get um, circulating air. And when it starts circulating, it's carrying air from one side to the other. When it's quite thin, um, it doesn't, it can't circulate. The air stays more or less where it is. As it gets thicker, it gets better at circulating. As it gets better at circulating, um, the windows start to conduct or start to send more heat through than before. Um, and we can look at this. Um, uh, this is a thickness um, along the bottom and the um, conductivity going up. So this is a, a uh, this is um, from an American research lab. So it's in um, it's in imperial imperial units. It's in inches and um, BTU per square foot Fahrenheit. Um, but the principle is basically the same. As as you, as it gets thicker, as the air gets thicker, up to about half an inch, which is about twelve millimeters, um, the performance starts to get better. And then it starts to get worse as it gets too thick and we start to get convection. This is the same whether we're using air or argon or krypton, um, which I'll talk about next. Um, so as they start to get better, as they started to make better windows, um, with their double windows, it got to a point where they can't make it thicker. Um, making it thicker will not make the window better. So they needed to start thinking of different ways to make their windows better. Um, these other, other ideas include um, low E, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, argon, as we saw, um, argon and also krypton are better insulators than air. So if instead of having air in the gap between the windows, if you start putting argon inside, your performance will get better. Um, and then um, triple glazing uh, started to be made. Uh, when you have three layers of glass, um, that's better, not because there's more glass, but because you have two air gaps. And you can have two air gaps that are both 12 millimeters, that are both the best thickness um, for insulation. Um, so, um, Let's just talk about emissivity for a moment then. Um, emissivity is the um, amount of amount that a body will... So emissivity is how much radiation will be... Um, how much heat will be radiated from a body. And some objects, some materials have high emissivity, some have low emissivity. And low, low E or low emissivity will reflect more heat. So if it's low E, it's usually good at reflecting heat. Um, and it reflects heat outwards as well as inwards. So if it's a very reflective surface, it's also not sending much heat out. If it's a dark um, black surface or a dark material, it will be emitting lots of heat, but not reflecting heat. Um, so let's just think about a window then. And um, this is emissivity is a bit confusing, I'm afraid. But let's just think about a window. Here we've got the window outside. It's uh, cold outside, it's warm inside. Um, now the radiation from the window will do three things. Um, some of the radiation will go through the window. So it will be uh, light inside and be warm inside because the sun's quite hot. Uh, some of the sun's radiation will be reflected and some of it will be absorbed by the glass and warm the glass up. Um, now, the sun's radiation, radiation has different frequencies. Um, most of the radiation from the sun um, is what we can see. So our, the, the, what's called the visible spectrum, which goes from red up to um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, the colours of the rainbow. Uh, those are the colours that we can see. And most of the sun's radiation is in those colours. There's some, when we go past um, violet, we get to ultraviolet. And there is some solar radiation in UV. Um, this can actually be quite damaging. And we usually want to stop this. 
Um, and there's also infrared, so the shorter wavelengths are called infrared. Um, and the, the longer wavelengths, I should say. As the wavelength, as the frequency gets lower, the wavelength gets longer. Um, and we also have um, everything that's hot is radiating heat. And most of the things down here on the Earth are not very hot compared to the sun. The sun is very hot. Um, so most of the radiation coming from bodies on the Earth um, is very low frequency. And in your house, um, everything in your house is doing some radiation. Um, of course, you have radiators. If you have a radiator, that is doing some radiation. Um, but the walls are radiating, you are radiating, the floor is radiating. And what you want in your house is really you want to let in the radiation from the sun so the house gets warm. And you don't want to let out the radiation from your house so that the house stays warm. And this is what low E, um, a low E coating on your windows will do this. So it will still let in um, the sunlight because we want the windows to be able to see outside. It'll let through the visible light. It will let through some of the heat because that visible light also includes heat. Um, but the radiation coming from inside your house, low E coating, will reflect most of that back into your house. Um, so this can improve that this is low E glass um, and this will improve the performance of any windows. Um, more ideas then for windows that they have and we can see um, in this cross section of window um, insulating the frame will help. Um, using seal, if you have an opening window, there's a chance that air is going to leak through the gap between the frame and the window. So putting two different seals will help, or three different seals will help to get a good airtight window. So we're not losing um, we're not losing heat uh, through the window, through the air through the window. Um, warmer edge spaces, so the gaps um, between the um, if you can see this, between the um, panes on the edge where the panes meet the frame, um, we can put what are, what's called a warm edge spacer, which will stop us losing heat in that area where the glass meets the frame. Um, and we may also want to think about clear glass, what's called high G glass, which will let in more of the sun's heat. Um, is something else that we can think about if we want to get more heat in the winter. Um, that's something we'll talk about another time. Um, just to give a quick summary of the developments of uh, windows from single pane, the development from single pane to double, double pane, that uh, reduced the heat loss by about 50%. Um, going to low E, you can get another 20% better than double pane windows. Um, switching to argon, from air to argon, you can get about 45% better than low E double. Um, going from double to triple um, is a, another 50% less heat loss on top of that. And then going from argon to krypton, you can get another 20%. So um, all of these, um, each of these savings add up to about 90% less heat loss than the single pane window we started with. Um, these are rough, these are rough numbers. Um, and this is just looking at the glass. So looking at the frame um, is, another, is another way to make windows better, which we'll look at another time. Um, but right now, let's look at this problem then. So um, what I want to do is think about the U value of these windows and how do we calculate the U value of these windows? Well, um, to solve a problem, just to remind you the steps to solve a problem, first of all, formulate the problem, draw a picture, um, plan your strategy and write down your plan, uh, find the equations that you need, find the data, do the calculation, um, check, and check again. And um, let's just, um, let's just try this for, 
um, these paper walls. So let's work out the U value for a paper wall. Um, it will be your turn next to try this with a with a glass window. Um, so for the paper wall, first of all, let's draw the picture. Um, and here we've got inside outside. And let's for our strategy. Uh, don't forget the surface resistance. So on, on each side of the paper, uh, there's a bit of stopped air, which provides some thermal resistance. And um, let's ignore the paper. Let's not worry about how thick the paper is, or let's not worry about what the U value of the paper is. Let's just ignore it, because probably it's not going to make a big difference. The surface resistance will make the biggest difference. Um, so here are some equations. Um, that's an equation for different, um, the R of the system, we add up all the R values of each part, um, and U equals one over R. Um, R inside is 0 0.13, R outside is 0 0.04, and we've said let's make R of the wall to be zero. And so we can add up the R values, we would get this, and U comes out about 5.9 watts per meter squared Kelvin. It will probably be a, a little bit less than this because we've got the paper, which we ignored. Um, but we've got a rough answer here. Um, so uh, your turn then will be to try and work out the um, U value of a window. Um, here are some numbers that you'll need. That's the thermal conductivity of glass, air, and aluminium. Um, those are the surface resistances. Those are resistances. Um, U value is K over D. So the thickness, we need to know how thick the glass or the air or the aluminium is to work out what the U value is for it, or R value if you're using R values. Um, those are the series, so one over U, that's what to do when you're adding up different layers of insulation onto each other. And on the right is for different kinds of insulation here and here um, in parallel. Uh, so just to draw, this is how I would draw our situation. Um, so we've got two panes of glass, and let's just say the frame is um, a square section of aluminium, um, 40 millimeters thick, um, 60 millimeters wide. Um, I think the glass is 363, so three millimeters of glass, six millimeters of air, three millimeters of glass. Um, and the frame is, let's make it two millimeters of aluminium in a rectangular section. Um, and there's air inside the aluminium. Um, for the glass, the air is very important. The air is going to be a very important insulator. Um, I would recommend for the aluminium frame, the air in the middle is not gonna make a big difference because the aluminium will conduct very well. So for the calculation of that, I would just recommend ignore the air um, in your calculations. Um, this is the dimension of the windows. Um, that's the uh, 1.22 meters high, 0 0.73 meters wide. Or the, the, that's the frame size, and the window size is 1.09, 0 0.63. Uh, so you'll need to later work out the area of the glass and the area of the frame. Um, the easy way to work out the frame area is to work out the total area of the whole window and then the area of the glass and subtract because the frame, the glass area plus the frame area equals the total window area. Um, and good luck. <laughs>